Bayelsa Queens and Rivers Angels claim final spots ahead of the Super 4 in the Nigerian Women Premier League. NFF reinstates coach Salisu Yusuf after one-year bribery ban. And European club football returns this weekend as Leipzig hosts Bayern in the top-of-the-table clash in Germany while Liverpool, Atletico Madrid, Inter and Juve all put their 100% start to the league on the line. My name is Kingsley Appan and this is Sport Express. For the international newsreel, here's Pedro Peter with stories making the round. Thank you, Kingsley. We start off with tennis. The former world number one, Kim Clijsters, has announced a surprise return to the WTA Tour in 2020, seven years after retiring from the sport. The 36-year-old Belgian first left the sport in 2007 in order to start a family and returned in 2009 before her second retirement in 2012. Clijsters, who is eligible for unlimited wild cards at the WTA tournament, will need to play three tournaments or earn 10 points in order to establish a ranking, and the four-time major winner is relishing the upcoming challenge. Elsewhere, two-time Grand Slam champion Naomi Osaka has parted, with, has parted ways with coach Jamie Jenkins following her recent poor run of form. Still on tennis, Dutch third seed Kiki Bertens was bundled out of the Zhengzheng Open in China following a straight set loss to Australia's Alia Tomlianovic on Thursday. The 27-year-old fell 6-4, 7-6 to Tomlianovic to exit the event while fourth seed Arena Sabalenka saw off Yelena Ostopenko 6-1-6-2 to advance. Meanwhile, three-time Grand Slam champion Andy Murray has taken a wildcard entry for the Shanghai Masters built for October as he continues his comeback in singles tennis events. Lastly, to cricket, batsman Joe Butler gave host England some much-needed hope following a poor batting performance on the opening day of the final Ashes Test against Australia at Oval in London. Butler, Butler crunched three sixes in his 64 not out to take England to 271 for eight in an unbroken stand of 45 after the home side had earlier lost five wickets for 56 runs to slide from 170 to 3 to 226 for 3. Australia, who have won the Ashes to retain the urn, are yet to bat. Thank you very much, Pedro. After the break, quite a lot to talk about on the Nigerian sports scene. We'll be back. Back here on Sport Express, Bolu Omoni steps in. Bolu, let's start from the stories or the story making the rounds from yesterday on Coach Salisu Yusu being reinstated, you no know, saying he'll take over from your mama, all of that not confirmed yet though. But after his one year ban, there was a press release yesterday, and now Salisu Yusu is back. So, what happens to your mama and to other coaches who have been saving, who have taken up his responsibility for the last one year? Initially, I was surprised he said not confirmed. Where he now said the press release because the press release came out yesterday that coach, um, okay, coach Salis Yusuf will be reinstated as the assistant coach of the Super Eagles at the same time he will take over from the under 23. Remember, he was the one in charge of the Chan Eagles, yeah, and the mama was his assistant. After the ban, the mama, I think, has done a good job with qualified for the under 23 Afcon, but now he's going to go back to being the assistant coach. Let's push that aside, let's come back to what happened. An evidence from um, the issue of CSR, there is no proof. At least for now, there's no proof the case is accepting and everything. But this one was caught on tape. We saw money exchanged and some words confirming this was a crime. It was banned. And I remember Pinnick saying something sometimes that, okay, it was being suspended, it was coming back. Many journalists and pundits were like, okay, maybe just said that out of love and everything. Maybe NFL were just trying to back him up. But now there's nothing like backup anymore. But man, I think it's. It opens the door to so many wrong things in the NFF because any other person that does something wrong will feel Salisu was probably forgiving, he came back, I could do the same thing and come back. Like you rightly said, what happens to Imama? Will he continue as the assistant or he will willingly resign? Because someone I think after so taking a ban, he should hustle to get back, not come back on the platter. And there are lots of rumors saying he even got paid while he was suspended. Wow. I think on this one, either the NFF of the president, but now we have to say it's the NFF because the board that took him back. I think they did a very, very wrong thing in bringing back Salisu Yusuf. And like I said earlier, this will open the door to so many wrong things in the NFF. Okay, still on the Super Eagles, um, the coach Gennett Raw lost his mom yesterday. Yeah, 97. 97 year old. Wow. Well, we hope that he has the, the God granting the fortitude to bear the loss. And now to Inyimba and other teams. Continental class this weekend. Yeah, for Oyimba, Oyimba will play their CAF Champions League against um, Al-Hilal. Uh, well, first of all, I think Oyimba will walk through them. Uh, Oyimba, I checked their history. They've lost just three games at home 
and the CAF Champions League. And the three games at home are Lali, Zamalek. Those are the teams they've lost to at home, including Real Bamako. So they don't just lose to anybody at home. They are very solid side. We know, especially when they are playing at home, they are more like, if not the only team, you can really beat your chest and trust that. When it comes to continent in Nigeria, they are always very solid. So I think Eimba will walk through this one. Yeah, they played four times. Once we lost one. Even the one they lost was a narrow loss, three two victory. But, that, but the ones they won, they won convincingly, including one of them, which was four one. I think Eimba will do enough to qualify. And for Al Hilal, they are not so strong away from home. They won just five games in their history away from home on the continent. So for me, I think Eimba will walk through it. And for the CAF Competitions Cup, Pelicans will host Rangers. Rangers are a two. Well, let me say two waiting. Sometimes you don't know what they come up with, with uh, what to expect from them. For Pelicans, the last game they played one one away from and both home and away. They won some penalties. And Rangers, the big boys, they are coming in. And since the calf, uh, since the Super Six did not play the competitive match, so that's the little worry I have for them. But they know what's at stake. They know definitely they would have been preparing harder for this. I think I'm not sure Rangers will lose, even if they lose, maybe by a narrow margin. But overall, home and away, I think Rangers will do enough to progress. All right, finally, let's go to the Nigerian Women Premier League. Yesterday, we, we dropped two teams who had made their way into the Super 4. And today, we can confirm that Bielsa Queens and Rivers Angels FC have booked a place also in the Super 4. And the final standings, Group A teams, Confluence Queens top that group. Then we have Invincible Angels relegated. Group B, Bielsa Queens top with 11 points. Cardinal Queens FC relegated. Group C, Adamawa Queens top. Dreamstar FC relegated and Group D Rivers Angels top or Shubibs FC just one point relegated. Bodu, when would the Super Four hold and what other information do we also, have? Also, I, I think you switched the group. You called it from D, C, B, and A. Okay. But, um, for the result, Bayesha Queens needed a draw yesterday and they got the draw. That although they were they panicked at the point because they led to nil and it ended to two. Now they progress. For there will be relegation playoff. Uh, Ocean Babes, Dream Stars, Cardinal Queens, and Invisible Angels. They will be the ones to progress. But as usual, we are not sure of the deal, but I'm sure they will play it very, very soon. Definitely, as usual, the Super Four will be a game to look out for. Okay, yeah, true that. I, I called the group from D to A, <laughs> not from A to D. <laughs> it appears on my equipment here. Okay, after the break, thank you very much, Bolo. Yemiya Desmaya will step in as we switch to the World Soccer Report. After uh, all the international break, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Club food, football is back and it's been hitting us back to back because after this weekend we have the UEFA Champions League on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay, um, let's start from, okay, let's just see Bundesliga. I think tasty ties here. Two really big teams. Yeah, games, Leipzig unbeaten against Bayern, who are also unbeaten, but I think Bayern have dropped points. Yeah, but Leipzig have 100%. 100% record. There's Leipzig, Bayern, and there's Dortmund, Leverkusen. Mm -hmm. Paderborn, Schalke 04, Osburg, Frankfurt, and Cologne, Mönchengladbach. Leipzig, Bayern just is the game to see. Yeah, it stands out. Uh, a game that promises goals. Um, Timo Werner and Robert Lewandowski at the peak of their powers. Albert Leipzig have started the season very well. They scored tons of goals as well. I think in their last two games, they scored nine goals. That in itself, you know, tells you this team is on the right path. However, they're playing the Bayern side, who are also struggling defensively. And that is where I will be giving Abby Leipzig a chance. But to Robert Lewandowski and Sergio Gnabry, Bayern have two players that I think can turn things around and get them the needed result. Overall, if I were to judge this game, on the basis of both sides and how far they come this season, I'll be looking at a high scoring draw in this one. All right, over to the Liga. PSG would host Strasbourg, Marseille travel to Monaco. Montpellier against Nice, Lee play Angers, Amiens also will host Lyon. And to the Serie A, it's Fiorentina, Juventus, Inter Milan, Udinese, Napoli, Sampdoria, Verona, AC Milan, Roma, Sassuolo. Juventus traveling to Fiorentina, 100% record. Inter host Udinese, 100% record. Do you think either of them would drop that 100% record? Well, Fiorentina need to in the response. Um, with all the excitement that's come up at the start of the season, yeah. the new owner, being able to sign Frank Ribery, and then the Officer Montella, you know, returning and all that, they need a response and a result from this one. Against you, now, man? Now, the Ventus, <laughs> on the other hand, have Kelini out for six months or there about. So they have a Manchester Elite, who had a terrible game on his Zemo debut fire. against Napoli. Now, Fiorentina have lost their first two games of the season. 
The first one being at home to Napoli, which was a seven goal trailer that was under controversial circumstances, but they really did play well in that game. Then they lost away to Genoa in two nil or so. Juve have won their two games. I expect to have goals in this one as well. Ah. Why I'm saying so is mm -hmm. Juve looks suspect yeah. for me. Even if the lead is dropped and then the Vera that was signed from the Sassuolo comes in. You know, there's something with Bonucci yeah. and new partners and having partners that know how to play the ball out of defense. He prefers partners that are grafters that are stoppers. That is where I think Fiorentina might have an opportunity in this one. But Varon, Juventus have Cristiano Ronaldo. So Juventus have the edge. I expect Juventus to win away from home. Inter, you didn't say in that Inter should do the job at home? I'm loving Inter right now. I love the way Conte has set up this team and the way they are playing. Stefano Sensi and uh, Barella are absolutely fantastic to you know that. Candreva on the right, of course, Romero Lukaku is going. Also, he's developing a good partnership with Lutero Martinez, who went on international break and was yeah, nine goals to... late, 13 games for Argentina. Inter look really good, and I think they'll be better than Udinese, who interestingly have our own true second in defense. Yeah. So expect. I think he has, enough, enough, he has enough or so. He might really miss out on this one. Okay, let's go to the La Liga. You know I mean? Barcelona Valencia is the standout tie. But we have Real Madrid against Levante. Madrid, you know, shaky. Are you Madrid might be injured? Yeah. They so say that hosting Atletico Madrid, who have their 100% record to defend. Alaves also take on Sevilla and there's Mallorca Bilbao. Barcelona Valencia, Valencia new manager. Barcelona, we hear no mercy. Maybe Suarez will come back. You just look at Barcelona and Real Madrid. You know, they've not started this season very well. But Atletico growing week in, week out. If you are talking about a team that can go anywhere and back out of the zone, it's a tactical Madrid. Yeah. Solid defensively. It's interesting when you look at that team and you look at the players that they lose every, every season. season. Yeah. And how everything still seems... Because he really just calms the situation and, exactly. and goes about his job. So I think going to do a though, it's always difficult. Yeah. You really don't know what you get with Sociedad on a good day. But I think Atletico are good enough to sneak a potential one nil or two nil. Now Barcelona and Valencia, last two meetings between both of them at the end they draw. One one at the Mestalla, two two last season in a game that I think that I really believe Valencia should have, should have won. won. Pyro played off his defeated Barcelona in the Copa del Rey final. So you have to say something. This there. looks very tight because it is a Barcelona that we really don't know what we will get. However. Valencia, new manager, new stability, I think Barcelona should get some of Finally to England, we just roll out the, the fixtures and you tell us which of these top teams will drop points. Ah. Man United hosts Leicester, <laughs> Man City at Norwich, Watford hosts Arsenal, Liverpool, they have Newcastle to play and Chelsea travel to Wolves. I think the only top six quote-unquote Teams that will have maximum points are Liverpool and Manchester City. Aha. United will most likely draw at home. <laughs> Leicester, I think, are very solid, well built, well set up. Um, Chelsea. At Wolves? Wolves, you, you know what you get from Wolves when you play the big team. Top, you top, top, Chelsea top last season, yeah. you know, at home. I think Wolves are great enough to at least get a draw in that one. Um, Arsenal going to Wolves for the only reason. I will give Arsenal an edge. It's because new manager, this is a potential bending opportunity. Because I think after Arsenal, they have Man City. So Arsenal might get something. But then if he ends the draw, I won't be surprised. All right. Spurs? Yes, Spurs. Also. And another thing that could get it on. But they're playing the Palace side, are very good away from home. Yeah. But interestingly, Palace have not scored in Sp at Spurs in the last six games. Oh. Yumin Song has scored in the last three games against Palace. So that's where you want to tilt it in favor of sports. And there's Hurricane also in the squad. All right. Thank you very much, Yemi Adesin. And that's our show for today. Thank you for staying with us all through the week. You can join us next week, Monday, for another fresh package of your number one sports show on Radio Sports Express. My name is Kingsley Apwan. Good morning. Can you